Welcome to the first sociology screencast. You'll be required to take notes as we go through this and I suggest that you'd leave about an hour to make sure that your notes are in good detail. So what you need to do when you take notes, remember that they're for your benefit, so you don't need to be completely detailed but you do need to when you look back at your notes be able to remember what this screencast was about and keep linking your notes back to differential achievement. So this screencast is looking at the differences in achievement between the middle classes and the working classes. When examining differences between the classes, we will mostly be looking at differences between the middle classes and the upper classes. You already have some background knowledge on this and we'll be revisiting quite a lot of the issues from Unit 2. But do be prepared to ask questions um, from this screencast when you come to lesson. So as you know, social background has a powerful influence of a child's chances of success. Children from middle class families on average perform better than working class children and the class gap grows wider as children get older. Children of middle class do better at GCSE, stay longer in full time education and take the great majority of university places. As we've already considered when we've looked at marketisation and the different types of schools, it's obvious that children from better off backgrounds are able to go to better schools so they're able to to go to private schools for example and we already know that middle class children benefit from marketization policies whereas working class children are disadvantaged but the difference between the middle classes and the working classes go further than that so even when the children go to the same schools there are still massive differences so this table coming up on this screencast shows you the differences between students from different backgrounds so as you can see those students who come from a higher professional background gain 77% 5 A to C's compared to those who come from an unemployed or not classified background so the higher professional and the lower professional backgrounds we can class as, as middle class um, intermediate, we're talking about sort of service sector jobs um, that are slightly lower paid and then these two classes here are in, in the working class. So a recent study by the London School of Economics has shown some interesting differences. So those from the poorest fifth of the household, poorest fifth of households in the UK, but in the brightest group at age three, are of average intelligence by five. So something happens between three and five, which lowers the ability of those ch children. By seven, they are likely to be overtaken by those who are least able, age three but from the richest fam households. So this study shows that it's not just intelligence. Some sociologists argue the reason why the working class underachieve is due to intelligence, but clearly it is not, because children who start off bright at three are not in that category at seven. So something is happening um, to those children, either in the family or in the school. So the rest of the screencast is going to look at why those differences exist. So when we look at class, we can broadly divide up the different factors as factors that take place in the home and factors that take place in the school. And the questions that are asked on the exam specification are often phrased so that you'll be asked to compare factors that take place in the school with factors that take place in the home and vice versa. So this screencast is actually focusing on factors that take place in the home. And within that, the factors that take place in the home, we have three things. We have material deprivation, which is basically poverty, cultural deprivation, which is this idea 
that the working class are somehow deprived culturally so that they have different norms and values to everybody else and cultural factors. Now you may think that cultural deprivation and cultural factors are the same thing whereas in actual fact they're not because cultural deprivation is insinuating that somehow the working class have lower values whereas cultural factors is just saying that they're different. So cultural deprivation theorists are actually functionalists so any theorist that talks about cultural deprivation you can actually pigeonhole as a functionalist and they believe that the working class are inferior in some way and that they don't have the same norms and values of the middle class so it's almost saying that it's the working class's fault that they underachieve so factors that take place in the school which we'll be looking at later include things like labeling and self-fulfilling poverty pupil subcultures and banding and streaming so the first thing that we're going to look at then is material deprivation and housing this will be familiar to you already so poor housing can have an effect on pupils achievement both directly and indirectly for example overcrowding can have a direct effect by making it harder for the child to study overcrowding means less room for educational activities nowhere to do homework disturbed sleep from sharing bed beds or bedrooms and so on so as you already know working class are more likely to live in smaller houses and as a result they may suffer from overcrowding they may as a result of overcrowding have lack of space and for young children especially development can be impaired through lack of space for safe play and exploration and then finally we might have some indirect effects of poor housing such as cold or damp housing and temporary accommodation so cold or damp housing can have effects on the children's health for example children in crowded homes run the greater risk of accidents cold or damp housing can cause ill health especially respiratory illnesses and ill health leads to more absences from school which means that children may get behind and find it difficult to catch up families in temporary accommodation may suffer more psychological distress infections and accidents and families who are in temporary education may also have to move more frequently so that their education is disrupted